I had a dream I was back in the time of Nazi Germany. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net, author of the Supernatural Christian book, Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey. And also, I have a passion for you developing a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. Let's light and stoke the fires of revival in our neighborhoods, cities, towns, and states. Now, I had a dream that I was back in the time of Nazi Germany. I was in a building with a man, and a Nazi soldier came in. Now, the Nazi soldier began telling this man that he was no good. He would never amount to anything. He had to obey what Nazi Germany government was telling him to do. And I felt like I was an angel to this man. I'm not really sure. You know, I felt like I was there, but I wasn't really there, you know. And I said, look, I'm from the future. I know you can't see it now, but this soldier is part of a conspiracy of evil. He's working for the rulers of darkness. He's trying to brainwash you into thinking he is light. You're a better person in Christ than this man is trying to tell you. You have a future in Jesus. You have a destiny. Now, I was trying to bring the light of Jesus into a place where darkness reigned. And it reminded me, like when Jesus went to the cross, he said this, Luke twenty two fifty two through 54, Then Jesus said unto the chief priests, <laughs> the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, But you come out as against a thief with swords and staves. When I was daily with you in the temple... You stretch forth no hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. So in this dream, I realized that I knew the truth. You know, I could look back. I'm Genesis 50, 20 hindsight, right? I knew how this was going to play out. I decided to walk outside on the public street, and the Nazi soldier, he saw me. You know, he saw me. And he confronted me with this liberty-inhibiting propaganda, and I told him I was going to walk on the public street. I told him that the purpose of government was to secure the rights of liberty, life, and the pursuit of happiness, according to the Declaration of Independence. Of course, that's our document, not, not the one in Germany. And then I woke up before the dream actually played out. Man, I wonder if there's going to be a, a continuation dream, a sequel dream. Now, I remember telling the man that he didn't have to be trapped in these lies. But the man, very sheepishly, didn't even bother to question his situation. He was resigned to believe what the Nazi soldier told him. He stood with the general sentiment of the people. The popular consensus of the people brought him to despair, misery, depression, And it did not bring him to the abundant life that Jesus Christ promises. This dejected, sad, fearful man valued the power of the Nazi gun more than the power of the cross. Now we know from Romans 13 that God sets up the powers and rulers, and we also know that eventually God will give people over to a depraved mind if they continually honor the Lord with their lips but deny him with their hearts and their lifestyle. We know that he pricks the reins of those hearts. So I look at America today, and I think that we're in a similar situation as this dream. Um, There's not the fruit of the Spirit running rampant down our streets. It's not being dominant in our culture like in the 50s. You know, morality was a big deal back in the 40s and 50s. Morality seems to be gone. Jesus prophesied in one point in Matthew 24 that the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound. So the iniquity, 
The, the iniquity comes from darkness. The darkness is taking over. The darkness is abounding right now. And this is where we find ourselves today. We're being manipulated by fear. Fear is trumping the love of Jesus Christ in our current situation. And I'm always fascinated how smart people like Germany could allow an evil angel like Hitler to rise to power. Now, if you remember a little bit about history, um, the Treaty of Versailles, you know, the Allies won World War I, and they basically just dictated terms to Germany. Uh, Germany didn't even have a voice in the situation. They had to sign the Treaty of Versailles or just be invaded, you know. Uh, Germany had a lot of things. And you, if you put yourself in their shoes, you know, think of us as Americans. Germany had foreign soldiers on their soil. They had to give up a lot of land. They had to say that they accepted uh, full ex- responsibility of the war from the war guilt clause. And there was absolutely no air force or submarines. So a proud people like Germany, they had resentment and rebellion stirring as an undercurrent. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. And the overall premise, if you're God's people, and, you know, if my people who are called by my name, is humility. It's to take your spanking, and the Lord will reestablish you, like he said in Jeremiah, to the Babylonian captivity. Just take your spanking, and then I'll reestablish you. Now, our human fleshly nature does not want to do that, even though we know spiritually and biblically that we are to be humble. It's hard. It's hard, I know. And I keep thinking about how many times in the Bible it says, for all this, they didn't repent. You know, do not forsake the chastening of the Lord. God chastens the people that he loves, but he also calls us rebellious and stiff-necked. So, we have a politician riding on this resentment and pride undercurrent of the, the sentiment of the people, and he rises through power to power through a myriad of, of circumstances. He was a good talker. He knew how to manipulate the media. And if you, you got to admit, Hitler was a master of propaganda. Um, did you know he was from Austria? Did you know that? But he had a passion for Germany. I wonder where that came from. I wonder if Hitler thought that he was evil, you know, like, oh, I'm evil. Or if he was actually doing a good thing for the people. I tried to read Mein Kampf, but I had to throw it away. I mean, I had to get rid of it, man, because right away he was like, ah, you just felt evil in that book. So do you think that Hitler was fully possessed by Satan in the beginning of his political career, or do you think that he just kind of opened the door for Satan to come in? Did he give place to the devil? Like the Bible says, give no place to the devil. So people... In Germany, they began to make compromises until Hitler became a dictator. They compromised their way into hell, and it reminds me of this scripture passage in Isaiah 28. They had made a covenant with death, and they made hell their refuge through complacency. That's what I keep thinking. In Isaiah 28, 14, the Bible says, Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem, Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood we've hid ourselves. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation he that believeth shall not make haste. So, believing liars, it's a way to make hell your refuge. And politicians, you know, they're not known for telling the truth. <laughs> they say one thing, they do something else when they get elected. So, who is to be our firm foundation? People thought it was Hitler. But God says it's Jesus. Jesus is the cornerstone. Now, going back to the exact time I was in the dream, Nazi Germany was already in power. The Secret Service, or the Secret Police they were called back then, was already in control. They were already dominating the streets. The, the tide of darkness had over, already come in like a flood. 
The power of darkness had crept in and overtaken the land like a flood. And the people who listened to Hitler and his claims to be Christian were standing behind him. Although many people didn't believe him, you shall know them by their fruits, of course. But for the man in the dream, it was too late for whether Hitler called himself a Christian or not. He was already in power. The compromises had already been made. The man in the dream had to work with the tools that he was presently given. I'm assuming that this man was called, thought he was a Christian in the dream. And I knew that he hated immediate pain. He feared the pain of the German gun over the pain of hell. He feared the pain of the German sword over the pain of God. You know, I would assume that people do this because the power of God wasn't present in Germany. I mean, a lot of people claim to be Christians, right? But was the power of God really there? And then, speaking of light and darkness, Jesus says, Luke 12, 2 through 5, For there's nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Do you see how now we can look back and we see how darkness crept in, right? Uh, There's nothing covered that shall not be revealed, nothing hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which you have spoken in the ear in the closet shall be proclaimed in the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them which can kill the body. And after that have no more they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yes, I say fear him. Now, people that did not fear God enough to take action of being the light of the world, people that didn't love their neighbor enough to shout out the truth in their neighborhoods off the rooftops, The root of the problem is that the people did nothing. It's complacency. And then they let darkness just march in and keep the light boxed in. Because of this compromise in how Hitler used Romans 13 to submit to the government authorities, that was his favorite passage, by the way. (laughs) Um, I found some stats. You're going to see that that Germany was predominantly Christian. Okay. Okay. Um, We simply believe that the people resigned themselves to just believe in him because they were ordained by God. I mean, once you keep saying something, you know, your Bible chop long enough, they'll go, well, yeah, that's the Scripture. You know, like, judge not, Matthew 7, 1, but they forget to read the rest of the passage. (laughs) Amen. Oh, don't judge me. Bible says don't judge. Well, what does the entire text of the Bible say, you know? Use righteous judgment. I mean, there's plenty of Scriptures. But anyway... Romans 13 says this, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that be ordained of God. Whosoever resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil... Be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So that's a pretty compelling passage, except for the point where you see um, doing evil. If you remember Nuremberg, the, the soldiers that were killing Jews and corralling Jews, they said, I was only following orders, and that didn't stand up. There's a point where you obey God rather than man whenever he departs from the precepts of God. Yes, God let Hitler rise to power, and he also let Nebuchadnezzar rise to power, you know, and the Egyptians rule over the Jews. Okay, In the case of Nebuchadnezzar, if you remember the 70-year Babylonian captivity, the people of God were not listening to the voice of God, and they were in disobedience to God, and they got what God promised them captivity. (laughs) So complacent Christians kept silent in Germany as darkness swept across their land. Now, one one thing I find interesting is that this Christian man in my dream, if he was a Christian, he held on tightly to the passages in Romans 13, but he ignored the rest of the Bible, and he just believed what the Nazi soldier had told him over following the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And I, I could tell that when I was talking to the man. 
It's like deep down he knew this was to be true, but he ignored it, ignoring the Spirit of God. So we can ignore the Spirit that's speaking to us in our spirit deep down and follow follow the crowd. Why does the path to destruction? So complacent Christians seem to put their trust in the popular argument. When in reality, the be the few type people, few there be that find it, Matthew seven fourteen, we need to be the ones responsible for pushing back the darkness with the light and love of Jesus Christ. Okay, the mark of the beast is not going to come in by Christians. It's going to come in by the beast. <laughs> Amen? So the light of love needs to be in our neighborhoods. It needs to be in our streets. Instead of a lukewarm hobby of watching TV, why don't we trade that, you know, that lukewarm hobby of watching TV, which I believe is a complacency tool of Satan. It's a distracting tool that enables Satan to bring the darkness into America. I mean, you know... I, you know me, I quit TV, it's a hashtag that I use. But really, while we're sitting there watching TV, we're letting our neighborhoods go to hell. You know, we're letting darkness come in. We're letting the snake into the garden. So instead of that, you know, why don't we engage with those around us? Why don't we be about the gospel and love of Jesus Christ? If just 1% of people that claim to be Christians in America did something, we could change the tide of darkness that is sweeping across our nation. Now, I look at the stats of people that call themselves Christians in America. It's roughly 70% by some polls. But I want to tell you something interesting. In Germany in 1933, the population of Germany was around 60 million people. Almost all Germans were Christian, okay, believe, belonging to either the Roman Catholic, which would be around 20 million members, or the Protestant church, which would be around 40 million members. Now, the Jewish community... It's interesting, it was only 1% of the total population of Germany at that time. And the Nazi Party, just so you guys know, Nazi is short for National Socialism. I don't know if you get that, but short for National Socialism? You might want to keep that in mind. The Nazi, the Nazi Party had a positive spin on Christianity in 1920. In one of their documents... Uh, they had a positive Christianity article 24 in 1920. It's, it was in their platform, and I quote, We demand the freedom of all religious confessions in the state, insofar as they do not jeopardize the state's existence or conflict with the manners and moral sentiments of the Germanic race. The party as such upholds the point of view of a positive Christianity, without tying itself confessionally to any one confession. It combats the Jewish materialistic spirit at home and abroad and is convinced that a permanent recovery of our people can only be achieved from within on the basis of the common good, therefore individual good. So keep in mind, this was 1920. This was on the heels of the Versailles Treaty. And uh, you can see... There was the word Christianity in there, but it's completely anti-Semitic, okay? Uh, they flat out combat the Jews in this thing, but people went with it. Only 1% of Germany was Jewish, so they made a compromise in this area. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be quite honest. I think that a lot of this came down from the father of the Protestant Reformation, which is Martin Luther. You know, he, he was kind of anti-Semitic in his writings. It, I know, it, if you didn't already know that, it's kind of wild. The father of the Protestant Reformation was anti-Semitic. So, now, I'm going to tell you, just because a nation calls itself Christian, just because politicians call themselves Christians and even quote Scripture, we need to be on our guard, okay? Because Hitler was doing the same thing. The power of darkness creeps in, and it likes to ride on the waves of the sentiment of the lukewarm, the compromising sentiment of the lukewarm. It likes to rise to power on pride, national pride in the flesh of a nation, things like greed, selfishness, or the tools of darkness. God sets up rulers and powers, but he reacts to the if my people. There's an if then, right? He reacts to the obedience of his people. If we be the light and go out and shine the light, then the darkness must flee. Amen? If we, like Nazi Germany, profess to be Christian, 
Are we? Oh, let, let's take a look at that. Are we where we were? Are we where the Germans were back in 1933, professing to be Christian but not really being Christian? Are we the kind of Christians that would be fooled by the Antichrist? Are we the kind of Christians that might take a mark of the beast? What do you think? Pray about it. Let's be the light. Let's push back the tides of darkness. And it begins in our home, our neighborhood, in our communities. Let's walk the streets, prayer walking. Let's go to the National Day of Prayer, May 5th. Let's get to know our neighbors. Let's do something for Jesus. Let's not watch TV and let the devil take over. Amen. If this has touched you, please consider sharing, rating, and supporting. You can share this with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Just share it on social media, email, whatever. Please rate the podcast wherever you hear it. If it's on the app, that would rock because the Conrad Rocks app, it's easy. You can get everything. And also consider supporting. You can support Conrad Rocks by going to the support page at conradrocks.net. It's because of you that I even exist doing this. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being in my life. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.